Stay tuned to PBS 39 as we focus on arts and access and meet a local photographer who brings visual art to the visually impaired. Plus, we explore an organization that makes art more inclusive in schools. We introduce you to the mother-daughter duo behind Michaela's voice and its program, Wheels of Friendship. Join us for these stories and more right now on Focus. Focus is for our community. Focus showcases the people, the places, and the issues that matter to you. Focus on what matters. You never know what you're going to see when you tune into Focus. Support for Focus is provided by Univest, banking, insurance, investments, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Focus, broadcast from the PPL Public Media Center at PBS 39 in Bethlehem. I'm Laura McHugh. In this episode, we focus on arts and access, starting with a program that shows students you don't need to speak to make your voice heard. For this story, here's Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo. Thanks, Laura. According to a 2015 study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one out of every five adults in the United States has a disability. A local nonprofit called Michaela's Voice strives to inspire children of all abilities to share the message of inclusion. I recently met up with Michaela and her mom, Kimberly, to see how one of the nonprofit's programs promotes inclusion through the arts. Does somebody want to tell me what makes them different and special? On this March afternoon inside William Penn Elementary in Bethlehem, Michaela Resch shares a message. Not with words, but wheels. Keep going, you got it. I had no idea what life would hold for her. The good story is, is 21 years later, it's held so much that I didn't think that she could ever have. See, Michaela was born with more obstacles than many encounter in a lifetime. Michaela was born with a brain injury that resulted in um, spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy, seizure disorder, she's legally blind, um, legally deaf. And though she can't walk or talk, with the help of her mother Kimberly, family and friends, Michaela's managed to make her voice heard. Wow, that might have been your handprint. Good job. Through their nonprofit called Michaela's Voice, Michaela and her mom spread the message of inclusion despite disability. Our message and mission at Michaela's Voice is that we should be celebrating our diversity and including everyone and that it's always possible. By teaching the importance of inclusion through the arts in one of the nonprofit's programs called Wheels of Friendship. Here, you might need a little more paint. We work with a group of children and at least one has a disability and they're actually in an inclusive setting and it helps them kind of set aside that difference. That's right, we're going to do it like that. The students worked with Kimberly and Michaela over the course of the school year to design, decoupage and paint each of these 12 canvases. Doesn't it get a little bit better when we work together? Every child in the school was included in the project and contributed a handprint. On this day, students helped Michaela add finishing touches by painting the wheels of her wheelchair. Miss Michaela Meredith is painting you up. Before putting them into motion and creating unique designs across the canvases. When they work together side by side to put paint on canvas or do decoupage, they forget about their differences and they see their similarities. Next, the students take turns test driving a wheelchair for themselves. I bring the second wheelchair often to let the children just sit in it and use it because a wheelchair and the disability can make kids uneasy, anxious, and when you give them the opportunity to just sit in it and figure out how it works and how you turn left and how you turn right, it, it kind of takes all that away. We were painting and we were um, using the wheelchairs so we can help paint and show that everybody is the same. It's a very interesting experience painting with a wheelchair instead of like a paintbrush. And like it was a lot of fun doing it. Each canvas represents a classroom from kindergarten to fifth grade at William Penn Elementary. They'll then be framed and when hung together will be two feet by 24 feet long. They are always gifted to the school where they were created and the school puts them on permanent display 
and it's just sort of a reminder to them to have the canvas up about always being inclusive and always finding ways to allow people to belong so they can be successful. They're going to tell us what's hard for them to do too. Kimberly and Michaela have shared this program with schools throughout the Lehigh Valley and beyond to create one-of-a-kind works of art. Recently, half-size prints of many of the paintings were displayed at Lehigh Valley Hospital Cedarcrest in Allentown. We are a children's hospital within a hospital, and we support all children uh, regardless of their differences, and we celebrate many things that help improve the health and well-being of all children. And we know that art therapy is very, very important to that. Incorporated into the paintings are messages of friendship, love, and for Kimberly, hope. I think hope that we are moving forward. It can be really frustrating because no matter how much progress we make towards teaching people to include, I, in every day I see times where people aren't inclusive. But she says that doesn't make her feel bitter, rather, she feels blessed. I am blessed because of Michaela's voice to know dozens if not hundreds of children with all sorts of disabilities. It's a blessing that I wish everybody had. What do you think she'd want to say? I just hope that we can do our little piece to make our community and our world more inclusive. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo, reporting. Thank you, Brittany. A program from the Lehigh Valley Arts Council aims to increase accessibility among people with disabilities. In our next story, Brittany introduces us to one of the participating artists who brings visual art to the visually impaired. As he walks a path through a late winter landscape, Stephen Sunick is on the lookout. So we need to kind of look for something that's open, but nothing that stands out too much or is too unique. Not for someone, but for something to capture in his next photograph. Many landscape photographers search for beautiful settings, but you look for... What I'm really looking for is the mundane and a way to make those mundane places that we normally overlook monumentous. By making the most out of what many would only notice for a moment. See, these are kind of things that you're looking for. A nice path to go through. Trees, like these will be in the foreground, they'll stick out a little bit more. And you just as you touch the trees here with the bark, you can actually feel that within the photograph itself too. He's not just speaking figuratively. You can literally feel his photos. My real intention was to give people an experience that they've never seen before, and the fact that you know, you can give sight in a way to the visually impaired that is a byproduct of the entire work. His photos allow those with visual impairments to experience the visual arts. That's amazing. That's what Tina Tallu experienced during Sunik's exhibit entitled Life Accessible at the Banana Factory in South Bethlehem. It's a whole new world that I've never thought that I'd be able to experience this way. I take pictures at home. I have enough vision that through a camera lens that I can take pictures, but I have to make them so large in order to try to figure out what they are. And here, I'm closing my eyes and feeling, feeling moss in a photograph that it's soft like moss is outside. Soon it captured these eight photographs at Yellowstone National Park and uses what he believes is a proprietary printing process to make them three-dimensional. Unlike most art exhibits, Stephen encourages his audiences to get up close and personal with his work, to not only see, but to touch and feel each piece. The people are what make the photographs powerful, not the photographs themselves. But can you feel the clouds? Yes, yeah, you can feel the clouds. Yes. Yeah, the, clouds. Feel the, clouds. On yeah. the one large picture I was able to feel the clouds which is, you know, amazing. I love it. It's an interesting concept. It's very detailed. I'm glad that it's here. Jeffrey Gerhardt is part of a group from the Center for Vision Loss in Allentown here to experience Sunik's work firsthand. This three foot wide photo entitled Barren Ground took Sunik about 14 hours to print. Using ink density of black ink, 
I print layers of black on top of a aluminum composite substrate and build up the layers to get the texture and the thickness of the different attributes within the image. Sunik, a full-time printer at his family's sign company, spends anywhere from 8 to 16 hours printing each one of his photographs. Each one has about 20 to 30 layers of paper-thin ink that cause various textures. Sunik says unlike a 3D printer, I'm building up the layers individually and I'm telling the computer and printer what to do based on a photograph in and of itself. Rita Lang manages the center's innovative programming. Due to a congenital eye condition, she has no depth perception or peripheral vision. Her sight is reduced to about the size of a pin. It just gives the blind and visually impaired community the opportunity to be a part of the visual arts community. A reminder that just because something is out of sight doesn't mean it's out of mind. This is my community and this art is for the people, it's not for me. You won't see any emotion of me within the photographs. It's all about the individual experience. Steven's work is so new that he wouldn't let us capture the process. As far as I know, no one else in the world has been doing this technique. But it's safe to say he's captured something special for the people who his work has touched. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo reporting. Thank you, Brittany. In a world filled with video games, busy work schedules, and constant distractions, some say it's not always easy to teach kids the benefits of a healthy lifestyle. Focus contributor Amy Johnson takes us inside a program called Community Canvas to see what happens when art is used as a tool to unlock some important life lessons. One, two, three, go! Kids today are completely bombarded they actually don't have the ability to be able to express themselves. But with a bit of paint and a blank canvas, art can become a perfect pathway for children to express their creativity. I love art. You creativity goes wild. And that's exactly the outcome founders of an initiative called Community Canvas aim to create. Local filmmaker Zeke Zelker heads up Lehigh Valley Art Spark, live events which turn art to entertainment. The kids are given a lunchbox full of art supplies. They don't know what's in that lunchbox. He loves art. He's always drawing, so this was right up his alley. Every little paper she finds, she's drawing something all the time. You gotta look fancy, you gotta look good. Staff members from Children's Hospital at Lehigh Valley Health Network partnered with Zeke to create Community Canvas, an outreach program designed to educate children about healthy living. This is the time to capture their attention and educate them in a way that's fun and in a way that really is uh, sustainable learning for them. The kids create their best illustration of a healthy living theme they learned in a school assembly put on by the hospital. The assemblies discuss topics like urban gardening presented by the Rodale Institute, the connection between good health and good nutrition, the benefits of unique exercises like Zumba, meditation and yoga, and the relationship between physical activity and mental health and well-being. I put a heart and some vegetables around it and then put this makes your life better. The incentive? One painting will be selected at the end of the evening to move on to the grand finale Community Canvas event in May. And a big round of applause as they get their photos taken. Congratulations to all the artists. A second winner will also be awarded via an online poll, but no one goes home empty-handed. Every participant gets a prize bag full of art supplies. The cool thing about it, too, is the artwork that the kids create ends up hanging at the Children's Hospital. Each event is held at a neighborhood venue. On this night, it's the Salvation Army in downtown Allentown. They get to enjoy an evening for free in an area that's um, part of their community, that's close to home with their families. If children are healthy, they'll become healthy adults. If they learn healthy habits early, they're more likely to stick to them. But it's not just all about painting. Healthy food and exercise are also key components of each community canvas event. Kenny says jump up and down. Entertainers and professional dancers who participate in the school assemblies are on hand to encourage the kids to get up and move. They dance, hula hoop, and play an energetic version of Simon Says. 
I had fun playing the games, learning new dance moves. All that activity works up an appetite, and that's where the tasty portion of the program comes in. Tonight's guest chefs are from Greenmouth Cafe. We challenge them to use three main ingredients and create three different uh, meals with those same three ingredients. Because the biggest thing is, is a matter of being able to use things and be economical. Owner Sarah Hinch says she happily accepted the challenge. Well, at Green Mouth, we have a mission of supporting our local community and helping educate others about how whole, organic food eating can um, create a healthier lifestyle. We did a Southwest black bean and sweet potato burger topped with some guacamole and tomato. The chili was awesome. <laughs> Healthy foods might not always be attractive to youngsters, but these kids said tonight's dishes were better than they expected. I like that burger with the guacamole. It tastes so good. Each recipe is typed out on a card for families to take with them and recreate in their own kitchens. I was thinking maybe my mom, we could make that and that we could share with our family. And they go home tonight and they've learned something that may continue on. Through the inspiration of good nutrition, exercise, and creativity, Community Canvas provides the backdrop to create a masterpiece for kids and adults alike to build on. For Focus, I'm Amy Johnson reporting. Thank you, Amy. Our next story explores another program that brings world-class arts to residents of economically disadvantaged areas. Even though Zollner Art Center at Lehigh University is located just blocks away from local schools, for some kids, the distance between their home and that stage might as well be a thousand miles. Here's how the team at Lehigh University aims to close that gap in the arts. On this bright October morning, instead of heading into class, Hundreds of students, the entire student body from Brothel Middle School, pour through the doors. They fill the sidewalks as they walk five blocks, one half of a mile, through Lehigh University's campus to their destination, Zollner Art Center. And there are children here from the Lehigh Valley, um, but as far away as uh, northern Philadelphia that are coming to the performance today. A total of 1,022 students and chaperones settle into their seats for a special performance by Cirque Alphonse. This troupe of family performers treats the all-kid audience to an axe-throwing, log-rolling, saw-straddling, singing, dancing, and acrobatic act, all in French and all real. A juggling axes is quite dangerous. Um, also jumping over saws and stuff like that. Um, everything that we use on stage, it's real. So it's sharp axes, sharp saws, um, real beard also. <laughs> Though they may not understand every single word, the students follow along just fine, describing the performance as majestic, awesome, cool, and unlike anything they've ever seen before. It was something I've never seen before. I've never seen anything like it, so it was kind of cool to actually see it in person. They're bouncing. And many of them have said, I didn't know this existed. I opened my eyes to some things. One kid last year said to me, you know, I want to do that. And, and that's what this is all about. It's about creating excitement, enthusiasm, and then that flows back into their educational program. Made possible with support from the United Way and Lehigh's Colleges of Education and Arts and Sciences, Zollner can offer these tickets twice a year for free and give many students their first trip to see firsthand theater of this caliber. Our next story explores an art program that takes fine art and supersizes it to add a pop of color to your daily commute. Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo joins us to explain. Thanks, Laura. If you're driving around the area, you may have noticed enormous works of art decorating the roadways. We met with the program's organizers in 2015 as they first unveiled Art Pop. For full-time photographer Olaf Starry-Pinsky from Emmaus, shining the spotlight on others... That's it. Excellent. ...is all in a day's work. So I'm really just looking at uh, whether the lighting is right, whether the shadows are right. 
A self-taught professional photographer of 15 years, Olaf shoots and edits photos inside his studio at the Banana Factory in South Bethlehem. His work, a focus on the faces of others. I just find people really interesting and they don't have to be, you know, models or famous people, just r normal, regular people uh, is what I really enjoy photographing. Launched in January of 2015, a new public art program in the Lehigh Valley puts the spotlight on area artists like Staroy Pinsky by showcasing their work on a more sizable scale, billboards. It, it's a fantastic way of putting art right in front of people's faces. Staroy Pinsky is one of six local artists selected as part of the inaugural Art Pop Lehigh Valley Billboard Competition. Launched by Adams Outdoor Advertising of the Lehigh Valley and the nonprofit Arts Quest, the program highlights local artists and the role of arts in the community. This is a great way to shine the spotlight on our very talented artists who live and work here in the uh, Lehigh Valley and surrounding region. On this day, a crew from Adams Outdoor Advertising unveils their latest vinyl alongside U.S. Route 22 a 14 by 48 foot enlargement of Starry Pinsky's photograph titled Faces of the Lehigh Valley. I think people are very busy. I think they're very stressed. I think they have a lot going on in their lives and sometimes they don't have time for art. Doing it this way, there's no effort involved. It's right there in front of them and hopefully they appreciate it. The program originated by Adams Outdoor Advertising in Charlotte, North Carolina in 2014 Art Pop Lehigh Valley is the second Art Pop program. We're so blessed to have so many great artists in the Lehigh Valley that we thought that the program would just be a natural fit for our area, and it has been. We had 80 artists who submitted works for this competition, um, and we selected six total artists whose works are now on display throughout the community. But you know, there was such an incredible diversity of styles, mediums, and just a wonderful showcase of the entire community. The pieces showcase an array of artistic style, from oil to acrylic. I think outdoor is the last great mass medium, and, a, and it is a blank canvas until somebody puts an ad on it or a message. And many of these artists have never seen their artwork transposed to that size. So when, you, when they see it, they're blown away by it. That was the reaction Michael Hess of Allentown had when he saw his painting titled Lilith on Crimson for the first time on Billboard scale. The enlargement of his original 20 by 24 inch oil on canvas towers above U.S. Route 222. It's very surreal. It's an amazing feeling to see it sitting there. Hess, a graphic designer who started painting about three years ago, says he never imagined his work would be selected for mass display. In his studio at home, Hess uses both brush and fingertip as he fine tunes details in his next piece. The majority of these I've probably done more with my hands than brushes in some cases. I think it's probably raising a lot of awareness of the art community in the Lehigh Valley. And it is, there's a big art community here. I think a lot of people aren't aware of it. And hopefully people are going to notice these incredible artists and this incredible work of art as they drive. And it'll make them think about the wonderful artistic resources and the wonderful artists that are right here in the Lehigh Valley. On display until the end of the year, both Hess and Starry Pinsky hope their featured work will inspire others to find the artists within themselves. And hopefully it's a starting off point maybe for getting into photography or appreciating painting or whatever it happens to be. Perhaps prompting passions with a passing glance. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzola reporting. Thank you, Brittany, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Until then, remember to focus on what matters. This program is recorded at the PPL Public Media Center at PBS 39 in Bethlehem.